Presenting to you iTalk 2nd edition 2023, jointly organized by the Department of Commerce, Mahimanapal and IBAT. IBAT isn't just a typical think tank, it's a dynamic force that concludes extensive research and also engages in advocacy on subjects spanning the realms of management, both in general and its specific aspects like the social policy, economics, geopolitics, technology and culture. This remarkable organization is dedicated to addressing the issues that have substantial importance and impact in our society today, both at home in India and also in the global arena. Allow me to introduce to you all the host, Department of Commerce, Mahi Manapal. Department of Commerce is a dynamic hub of knowledge and expertise where academic rigor meets real world applications. It also is leading in shaping future leaders of commerce and industry. Department of Commerce, Manipal Academy of Higher Education has courses to offer in BBA, BCom, MSc, MCom, MA and PGD in Logistics and Supply Chain Management. It's a brief about the Department of Commerce. This morning, we've gathered here to introduce to you iTalk, a project that springs from the very core of IBAT's predominant mission iTalk is a community-driven effort aimed at bringing IBAT's enlightenment ideas to the hearts and minds of the local communities throughout India. It's about sharing impactful ideas, sparkling meaningful discussions, and also creating a wave of positive change. We hope that you find today's event as engaging, thought-provoking, and inspiring as it is always. As we explore the potential of iTalk, let us invite you all into this brightening and enlightening journey. We welcome you all. The organizing committee this year has come up with a very diverse kind of uh, setup of speakers where we have speakers coming from different backgrounds who are going to enlighten their experiences, their learnings to all of you. And it is definitely going to be a very uh, informative, entertaining, and uh, something which will give you a chance to think about certain things which you ne may probably have never thought about. It. Many times uh, in our uh, routine life we focus on our disciplines, what we have come to study for and we ignore certain areas which uh, probably would interest us and would definitely make us a better or holistic personal personality. But we uh, typically ignore those uh, uh, topics and we focus morely on the discipline. We become, we start working in silos. So typically this uh, particular uh, kind of activity we are actually organizing to break this silo so that people work on interdisciplinary areas. And that is something which uh, even the national education policy talks about and even Mahe advocates it to a large extent. So keeping that in mind, uh, uh, Department of Commerce and IBAT partnered in organizing this activity and we have this wonderful location where we are organizing it. I am sure you will enjoy the entire show. In the interest of the upcoming students, they should know what is going on around, they should know which carrier they should select and all that and for that purpose they should have first hand information from this HUS mouth. So it is not online program, it is offline program on each one and therefore if you listen to those people who are outside in their profession, who are outside in their activities and all that and who have excelled in almost all the fields and that's why we have selected the speakers from different fields. So we got professors, we got doctors, medicine and education academicians and all that. I request uh, Dr. Sandeep Prashunoy, C.A.K. Rajaram Shetty, Dr. K. Dasharat to join us as well to do the honours. I request all speakers, organizing committee members and curators to come forward for a group photograph. 
all the speakers, organizing committee members, curators, kindly come forward for a group photograph. Ladies and gentlemen, it's both an honor and privilege to introduce the distinguished inaugurator of this event, Commander Dr. Alan Lana. Sir has 30 years of experience in the industry and academics. Prior to his academic services, he served as a commander in engineering branch of the Indian Navy in various services. He's also had a PhD in reliability engineering from IIT Mumbai and MTech from IIT Delhi. Post his naval services, he served as an associate dean research and professor of mechanical engineering in featuring National University Fiji Islands for five years, followed by dean academics and professor in symbiosis skills in Open University Pune. He was the Dean Faculty of Manufacturing Skills and Dean Academics in BSTU Jaipur before taking over as the Vice Chancellor of Oriental University Indore in the year of February 2021. So has a long list of publications in international and national journals that includes various book chapters in Springer publications. Welcome you, sir. Thank you so much. A very good morning to all those who are present here today. It's a pleasure for me to be here on the second, occasion, uh, second edition of iTalk. iTalk is something I do a lot at MIT. <laughs> yeah, uh, in fact, even only yesterday we had uh, three conferences running in parallel, so I was there for an inaugural address and for the second one there was a valedictory one, so sometimes I forget which is which and yeah, it can lead to some confusion. But, Firstly, let me start with uh, complimenting the Department of Commerce and IBAT to have organized uh, this particular uh, event. Uh, it provides a platform for all of us to come together, exchange ideas, information, knowledge on relevant topics from diverse domains. So that is why it is important. Uh, also, when I uh, looked at the, the pamphlet that was given to me and uh, I couldn't help but notice that every speaker had some title of the talk except me. It just said inaugural address. So I had the freedom to choose what I can talk about, though I was told that I can talk about leadership, how it is changing, and my experience from in the armed forces to where I am today. So I'm just going to keep short about the armed forces because that is something which is a given. It is known. Your respect, your honor flows from your stripe. You're trained in the academy. The people know how to obey your command. And uh, therefore, uh, there's no confusion. The processes are laid, strictly followed, and uh, if something de some deviation happens, there are laid out regulations for it. However, in the civil world, it is not so. It is not organized that very well. So I had one experience where during the naval service, we were told to take over um, a civil organization. It was a dockyard, which used to repair the naval ships and submarines in Mumbai. And all the 11,000 plus workers were actually um, under the state government and they had the true trade unions and things like that. And they wouldn't recognize anybody in uniform or outside uniform. To them, everybody was the same. It was a difficult thing because we were never trained to get uh, people outside the uniform to work uh, like they work in the defense. So that was a big challenge. And uh, the only help we could get from our admiral those days was uh, a shrug of the shoulder when we asked him, sir, uh, how do we handle this? He said, I don't know. You go ahead and make sure that the productivity is there, the ships who come for repairs, maintenance are turned around quickly, and I don't want to hear any complaint. Nothing should go in the newspapers because things used to go to the papers or the media, uh, especially uh, when the trade unions uh, went for a strike. Anyway, so we had a good experience there. I had a very good experience of about four to five years. So let's talk about the academic world as to what is changing and there are some leadership challenges. So that is what uh, my topic is. It's about leadership challenges in education now. The first point, I just scribbled something on my diary so here I can, uh, I can talk about fast pace of changes in technology. Now this is a reality. And the questions we ask in the Education Institute today is, 
how are we preparing our students for this fast paced changes that is happening especially in the technology world so we have this iiot industry 4.0 now talking about 5.0 we have this 5g beyond 5g when we talk about computing it was cloud computing most of your industrial automation robotic systems were working on that suddenly things are changing you have 5g and beyond 5g communications coming in computing have become edge computing so what you taught to the students 3 years ago is changed now so are they prepared for that is there is a requirement now to train the students to learn for life and how do you do that because the students also are very different from when we were students and the uh, the best part i liked when i was a student was nothing was changing so what was taught 30 years ago was taught to me and still continued so the books didn't change the course material didn't change the question papers changed a bit here and there but mostly remained the same so nothing was changing it was good and you done your btech you said ah i am done i am now a graduate now everything studies finished but now it's not that like that it's changing so how do we prepare these students for this fast paced changes so what we're doing at least at mit and most of the good institutes are doing uh, worldwide and also in india is that bringing industry inputs to the curriculum and the way you do this is not only the board of studies or the academic council but you need to have an, some platform to get the industry experts in in your curriculum so how do you do that uh, industry advisory committee is one way to go about it so industry advisory committees have industry experts and uh, from each domain and you sit together with hod you exchange ideas they tell you what is redundant what new has to be coming and there are a lot of softwares coming now softwares have become tools to analyze problems to speed up the solution but there is a danger too the danger is students these days in education institutes have become more and more reliant on these softwares therefore missing the importance of the fundamental knowledge that is required which is for which forms the backbone of that particular concept and that needs to be realized and which is not happening but at the same time students can challenge you with the solution sometimes they are able to get to the correct solution through the software much faster than you can the idea the, the problem is how do you rely on that solution which is coming out from software if you do not validate it so therefore uh, it is becoming very very important for the educators also to see that the students understand the fundamental concept at the same time are prepared to work through the softwares because that is what they will do in the industry nobody is going to ask them the fundamental theorems anymore they want the solutions to be provided through the software so that has become very very important <clears throat> there are new technologies coming one way i said iac is the second is industrial collaboration so at mit at least what we are looking at we are looking at all the electrical vehicle technology center of excellence center of excellence in cyber security especially iot cyber security we are looking at uh, semiconductor fabrication facilities we are tied up with semiconductor lab chandigarh we are looking at cyber physical systems so all these centers are now coming up in collaboration with the industry so that the industry are representatives are always present they gave us some research projects in which the students are involved directly either through internship or just as doing minor project regular projects in that particular department through the collaboration with the industry that is the way forward for us so that we can ensure that the students are prepared for tomorrow other good thing about mit is that we have this minor projects and major projects especially textila we have this lot of clubs about 70 odd clubs half of them non technical but the other half technical which are mostly student bodies or professional societies and the major projects are about 22 plus where mit invest about 2.5 crores every year and lot of other funds come in through sponsorship allowing students to work on real world problems to come together in groups from different domains so you can have computer science students coming from mechanical electrical coming together to form a product or to work through or fight a real world problem a real world challenge 
changing aspiration of youngsters. So this is another reality. So uh, we were very happy when we were youngsters. If you did graduation, you know that you'll go for a job, but not anymore. Students want something more, something extra. There are some who are looking for good pay package. So this was like one of the interviews that I had with a, a, a student who was supposed to join and looking for taking admission at MIT. And the first question the student asked me is, uh, how is the placement? What kind of salary I can get from the computer science program? So this is a reality. You can laugh about it, but it is something which is a truth. At the same time, we, want, we have seen that the core engineering programs are losing their shine. More and more students want the computer science programs. They want to go there because they know you get very good, handsome pay packages later. I have a scenario uh, some time ago where core engineering program, the students were made to sit through the placement interview and they purposely, on purpose, did not do well. So that, they, so that they're not picked up by this core engineering program. They're looking for something more. They're looking to join consult, is not looking to join any of the core mechanical uh, industry, but wants to do or wants to work in the area of the software. So these changing aspirations are there and we are guiding students, telling them as to the growth in the core engineering programs are much more stable and much more faster. People who join uh, a particular company only for looking at uh, only looking at a handsome pay package get burnt out very very fast and we can see the examples all these people with very good packages don't continue in the same industry for more than two years that's a fact increased push towards ranking and accreditation now this is another reality all the education institutions now are worried about ranking and worried about accreditation they can measure uh, how the placements are working, what kind of salaries you're getting, how many paper publications are happening, how many patents are being filed. But who is measuring the quality of knowledge that you are imparting inside the classroom? Nobody. One, because it's very difficult. Two, you can't, if you can't measure it, then you cannot control it and you cannot monitor it. And that has taken a backseat. And that's a reality again. More and more lecturers are imparting knowledge through PowerPoint presentation, button click. Nobody is explaining the concepts anymore. They are more worried about some paper that has to be written every year, at least two, maybe four. Then I get my next promotion. I can get a good PMS point. So the quality of education is suffering. There is some argument here that there is a feedback mechanism. The feedback is uh, you don't teach properly in class. Uh, the student doesn't learn, he goes to the industry, the feedback is not good, you will lose points uh, that you get in maybe NRF ranking. Yes, that can happen, but that feedback route is very long. By the time you start realizing the impact of poor, in, poor knowledge dissemination in the classroom, it's already too late. Generations of students would go without learning much. Again, at the academic institutions such as uh, um, MIT and Mahe, large institutions, we need to understand that the quality of education or the ranking or the reputation of the education institution is not built on good buildings or lab facilities. Human resource, that is important. Unless you have a good teacher in the classroom, you may not get a good reputation later. So this reality has to come. Therefore, the HR management becomes very, very important. We are talking about democratization of the academic institutes. Every decision that you make, whether it is about PMS, whether it is about new promotion policy, it has to be discussed with the senior people in the department so that everybody has got a say. You need to bring or you need to build a team which trusts the leader and the system. And that has become very important again. You cannot rule by stick anymore because this is not a uh, a corporate world or not an industry, it's an education institution where everybody has uh, a respect, they have dignity and they are learned people and the respect that comes mutually between the leader or the management and the uh, faculty is something which is very, very important. Unless that relationship is strong, you may have problems. So what do we do? How do we manage the education institutions? We just go to the basics of management, and these are very simple. Carry out a SWOT analysis, that is what I did when I first got exposed to the academic institution uh, outside the country, luckily for me. 
draw out a short and long term plan map out the resources the very very important for the leaders to realize that you need to ask for resources if it is required somehow sometime i see people shy out from asking i have been um, told many times that uh, you demand too much but that's what is required and you need to plan out very well you need to show why the resources are required and these kind of resources what would be the outcome 5 years 10 years down the line if you are able to convince your management you have done a job so that is required and this comes from the basics of management principles draw out milestones and monitor progress and then use feedback analysis to do timely course correction across uh, every year we go in for ranking and we have this ranking uh, announcements and uh, sometimes you go up sometimes you go down we need to go down into the reasons and find out what are the factors which are very very important where you need to stress more what kind of resources will be required for that can i balance this resource requirement something more where i can generate more benefit i think this kind of analysis is required in academic institution today i am very happy i don't know whether i have crossed my limit but thank you so much for inviting me for this novel address it was such a pleasure to be here i may have some time to sit for a few more uh, uh, talks but after that i'll have to go for some other appointment thank you so much jai hind thank you sir we appreciate your openness in sharing a uh, very valuable insights in fact i um, i think the audience will agree with me that was a lot of insightful talk right can we give him a round of applause again thank you so much it's an honor to have you with us today